I'm Emily. And I'm Hannah. We are best friends and dietitians. We have a goal of challenging nutrition misinformation and fitness trends with an evidence-based approach. Each episode, we will dish up our thoughts about the latest facts on a popular health-related topic. We're the Upbeat Dietitians. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Upbeat Dietitians podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. In today's episode, we are going over a very popular fad diet right now. Yes, it is a fad diet. We're going to be going over intermittent fasting. Yes, it's very exciting. I'm sure you've heard of it. I I feel like most people that have heard of it, I can't imagine you haven't at this point. And basically, we'll be kind of discussing what intermittent fasting is, the most popular methods, who could benefit from it, the efficiency or efficacy more so with weight loss, and then when you should not do intermittent fasting. Yes. Okay. So let's jump right in and talk about what intermittent fasting is. So the term intermittent fasting is just like an umbrella term for having alternate periods of like fasting and eating, fasting, eating, fasting, eating, like a back and forth, which honestly, I feel like that's just being a human is like having periods of that, but it mostly means like having specific times where you fast and times where you eat. And so you have these fasting times during specific, specific times during the day. And you have these eating times during other particular times of the day. And there's different like methods. So there's a few, we're going to kind of list off, but there are a bunch of different like intermittent fasting methods that kind of dictate when you eat and when you fast. So one very popular one is the 16-8 method, which is where you go for about 16 or so hours without food. And then that allows for about six to eight, I don't know, I can't do math, six to eight hours where you're actually eating food. The second one is the eat, stop, eat method, which is where you fast for 24 hours, about one to two times a week. So you eat and then you stop and then you eat. And then the third one is the 5-2 diet where you only consume 500 to 600 calories on two non-consecutive days of the week, but the other five days of the week you get to eat normally, whatever you want. Yeah, it's very, they're all very similar in the sense of there's restrictions on times you're eating and the amount of calories, but when it comes down to it, it's restriction over a certain amount of time. One of the biggest arguments behind why people should be doing intermittent fasting is there's a lot of, I guess, points made around how excess calories and less activities leads to increased risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, et cetera. And that they'll basically, they're saying that when you eat less by limiting what times and the amounts you're eating, you will better decrease your risk of these diseases. And additionally, there have been arguments that fasting will decrease your amount of adipose tissue or your fat. And just to kind of come back right away, that first argument, there are many different methods of decreasing your calories and increasing activity, not through fasting. You can eat three meals a day, two to three snacks a day, and still not consume excess calories and still be physically active. So just right away, that argument kind of doesn't have a lot to stand on. Additionally, the entire prospect around fasting being linked to decreased fat mass is not very supported by research right now, but we'll get more into that as we go. And kind of, of course, we always want to come bring all this information to you from an evidence-based approach and kind of look over what the science says. So there are actually some cases where intermittent fasting can't benefit you. With any fad diet or any diet in general, if it works for you and you feel good and energized throughout the day, great. You can keep doing that. But from a scientific standpoint, a testimonial, basically one person's experience is the weakest type of scientific evidence. 
So just because it works for one person does not mean it'll work great for someone else. But if you feel amazing doing this, go ahead, knock yourself out. If you don't mind restricting yourself for long periods of time, that's your life because at the end of the day, it's your body and you get to do whatever you want with it. And we'll not judge you for that. It's when it becomes uh, almost toxic behavior where people push it onto others and basically use fear mongering tactics and tell them like, oh, you're going to get diabetes because you're not, because you're eating for more than eight hours during a day, stuff like that, <laughs> which yeah. like most people work for eight hours a day. So are they just supposed to not eat outside of work? Like just for that perspective? Right. Like Most the fear mongering and also like saying it's the only approach that works. That's what gets me too, is saying it's the only way to lose weight, the only way to reduce your risk of diabetes or whatever other claims they make. Um, like we kind of already said, there's a million ways to go about health and you can't just pinpoint one particular style of eating. Exactly. Additionally, someone who might be experiencing GERD symptoms, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease, did I say that right? Okay. Mm -hmm. I haven't said that whole acronym in a long time. I didn't either. I'm glad you said but, that, not me. Um, essentially, like when you experience feelings of reflux in like your esophagus, any burning, burning, any regurgitation, <laughs> burning. burning. <laughs> I, I combine burning and regurgitation, any burning you're experiencing. <laughs> um, the intermittent fasting can help with this because. One of the biggest things with GERD is we want to reduce how many hours before bedtime we're eating. And additionally, that laying down, eating really close to really close to eating can exasperate our reflux symptoms. So from some standpoint, fasting at night can help because it's pushing back that window of when we're eating so close to bedtime. Basically, with anything we talk about, we've talked about this so much. If it's not maintainable and you can't see yourself doing this long term, it's probably not for you. And you yeah. probably won't see a lot of success with it, which is really unfortunate because there are a lot of there are a lot of diets that make promises that they can't upkeep. Yeah. So in terms of weight loss, we can't talk about fasting without discussing weight loss. Um, let's go over if it will help with weight loss. So we kind of already boiled it down a little bit earlier saying like it is going to lead to a period of time you're allowed to eat versus other times where you can't eat. So that likely will lead to a, lead to a caloric restriction and then that will lead to weight loss. So it boils down to that simple fact, but there is just a lot of cons that go along with it, which I'll get into. Um, but this is the only way that it would lead to weight loss is if when you have that eating period, if you're eating less calories than you burn, then yeah, you're going to lose weight. Just like any other fat diet where you eat less than you burn and weight loss occurs. But like Emily already said, you can eat three meals and two snacks throughout the day and still be in a caloric deficit and lose weight and not have to feel so restricted. Um, another sort of, or I guess one of the first cons of doing this, having this like style, this pattern of eating is that restriction, both physically and mentally, I'd say can lead to periods of overeating or even binging during that eating period, which I just said period like eight times, but we're going to go. I didn't <laughs> notice it. <that> much, but... <laughs> um, and if the whole point of this is weight loss and you're binging and overeating during that eating period, <laughs> I can't keep saying the word period. I need to find a new word. Um, if you're overeating during that time, then that's going to undo the whole effect of weight loss. And you might even gain weight during this. <laughs> this all comes down to, if you can't do it for the rest of your life, don't even start doing it. It's not worth it. It is much more feasible to make small sustainable changes that are actually going to be able to be part of your life forever. Because if they're not, you're just going to fall off of it and then feel guilty. And then probably you know, head straight into that whole restrict binge cycle anyway. So if you feel like you already kind of do a fasting thing, or maybe like you don't eat breakfast and you kind of do lunch and dinner and you feel like you don't overeat during those times and that works for you. Cool. Keep it up. Go for it. That's totally fine. But I have seen a lot of clients that don't eat breakfast just because they don't have time or they don't know what to eat or they forget. 
And then they end up overeating at either lunch or dinner or like at nighttime because it just comes back with a vengeance that hunger does. And then that of course would be where like a fasting would not be effective. So again, if it works for you to not have breakfast or whatever meal it'd be, go for it. But it often just leads to overeating later in the day. Yeah. I actually joke that I do intermittent fasting because I like eating dinner so early. Like I eat at 4 PM. I am <laughs> a senior citizen <laughs> and I will eat breakfast around like 7 38. So I'm technically getting, if I like, and I typically finish around like 4 30. So I'm getting about at least like a 14, 15 hour fast in. Yeah. So I'm technically an intermittent faster, but, but I don't call it that just because I like eating early dinners. Yeah. And you don't have to like label your diet. You can just no, eat and, the way that feels good. Yeah. So like, and I don't even need to, it's just because that's what I'm hungry. Yeah. So that's funny. it's whatever works for you. Um, I don't skip meals because I'm a hungry person. <laughs> <laughs> a hungry, hungry Emily. I am a hungry, hungry hippo. Hungry, hungry. <laughs> I wasn't going to call you a hippo, but if you want to call yourself that, I, it's okay. I, I call myself a hungry, hungry hippo just because of the commercials. Mm. You know, the like game. Well, yeah. Okay, okay. What okay. commercials though are you talking about? Have you never seen a hungry, hungry hippo? commercial not the commercial no <laughs> they like it's all these people playing hungry hungry hippos and then there's like some music going on in the background and can you still buy them like can you still buy that game i think so like the commercials are like recent yeah well, go was, like, watch a commercial time. i don't think there's an actual song but i call myself a hungry hungry hippo <laughs> mostly because i like the game <laughs> I do too. I used to play it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Maybe that's I why we became know. dietitians. <laughs> we were inspired. <laughs> Put that in a cover letter. <laughs> <laughs> I was inspired by the childhood game Hungry Hungry Hippos <laughs> and I wanted to help the other Hungry Hungry Hippos out there. I felt bad for the ones that didn't get to eat the marbles. <laughs> and that's how I knew I wanted to be a dietitian. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> what just happened anyway <laughs> um the last point kind of is when you should not do intermittent fasting so if you have any type of history of disordered eating and eating disorder obsessive exercise any type of really extreme restriction can be detrimental to your health and we don't want to push you back into that cycle of disordered eating or anything else like that. So that kind of goes not only for intermittent fasting, but any type of really restrictive diet. Um, we want to work on building up your relationship with food and your body again, and not necessarily telling you what you can and cannot do. Additionally, if you work a high stress, high energy job where you're on your feet all throughout the day, or you work all day and you're a parent, and you have to take care of your kids or you work multiple jobs. Essentially, if you are doing a lot throughout the day and need to be pretty energized, intermittent fasting probably won't be for you because there's a period of time where you're not allowed to eat. And if you need that energy from food, you're gonna be really tired and can potentially burn out. Yeah, keyword food there. Don't just be depending on caffeine for energy when you could be eating. Yes, that too, which we can do. We should do a episode on caffeine. Ooh, we should. We touched on it in like the back to school one, but we should do a whole episode. Yes. Yeah. So I feel like there's a lot we can go into that. So stay tuned. <laughs> we'll talk about um, caffeine. Additionally, since we just talked about weight loss, you should probably not do intermittent fasting for weight loss because there are much more maintainable strategies you can take to lose weight and just restricting the time of day or taking out meals, it can lead to a caloric deficit, but are you going to do that for long periods of time? And when you do have to, when you want to go back to more normal eating, how your body adjusts to that. So probably not the best weight loss method as well. 
And then lastly, if you are a diabetic, you should not be doing intermittent fasting because if you've worked with any type of dietitian before, you find any type of carbohydrate education, diabetic education, whatnot, it's really important that we are maintaining a stable blood sugar throughout the day. And with long periods without eating, that can lead to those hypoglycemic states and your body will overcompensate with those other systems and you might have to rely more on medication or whatnot. And your body typically wants food when it's in that hypoglycemic state. So normally you would add like 15 grams of carb or something to get it back up pretty quickly. But if you're within that fasting period, what are you gonna do? It can be really dangerous for diabetics especially, so we do not recommend it. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. So final verdict then is, I'd say like two out of 10, we would not recommend intermittent fasting. It's not a zero. We will save other fat diets for zeros because there are worse things to do than intermittent fasting. Cause apparently Emily is an intermittent faster. Yeah. She exposed herself on camera today. Um, so this two out of 10. A, this is a safe oh, space. <laughs> should we start ranking diets? I feel like we should, we should go I, back. I, I, that'd be fun. We could do a whole episode of just like ranking them. Yes. Okay, but anyway, I'd say two out of 10 for intermittent fasting. I don't know if you agree or not. I agree, I agree. <laughs> um, it can work for some people, but I mean, if you just naturally don't eat for 12 to 16 hours a day, you don't have to call it intermittent fasting. That can just be when you are hungry or not hungry or sleeping or whatever, and that's okay. Um, you don't have to have a name for your diet. You can just You can just eat in a way that feels good for you. Um, Of course, like Emily just said, we do want you guys to eat about every three to four hours. Ideally, that helps with not only maintaining that blood glucose stability, but also helping you stay satisfied for a while. So you don't end up getting down to like a one on the hunger scale and then overcompensating and eating so much you get full and then you end up being too full. So you restrict and that whole cycle just keeps going around. So ideally, we want to shoot for like getting something in every three to four hours and trying to get in some protein, fiber, and healthy fats at each of those eating periods to help us again with blood sugar stabilization and staying satisfied. Woo. Go health. Tud. <laughs> cool. Tud does it again. Yeah. I don't think I really have much to add on that. And yeah, I guess I'm an accidental intermittent faster. <laughs> And every day you expose something about yourself that makes me question everything. First the peanut butter thing. Now you're an intermittent faster. I just, I know it's, I it's, can't keep up. it's okay. Maybe someone will also realize they're an accidental intermittent faster, but I also don't go around uh, promoting it. I just kind of live my life and do whatever I want. <laughs> AIF. Yeah. Accidental intermittent. We should get shirts that say that. Would you guys like those? Would any other AIFs want a shirt that says AIF? <laughs> I'm gonna think it's some like medical condition or something. <laughs> like, what is that? Uh, maybe we shouldn't make those. Shirts. I feel like would that be like somehow going like giving back to the intermittent fasting? Yeah. Uh, energy right now. We're not gonna do that. Yeah. Never mind. We're Scratch own, that. Our own thing. We are. <laughs> Instead, oh, intuitive, buy- intuitive eating. That's where we're going back to. Yeah. And if you happen to intuitively fast, <laughs> I guess that's okay. As long as it's actually intuitive, like Emily and not like Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, exactly. We don't, we don't support that because that's not a thing. Intuitive fasting is not a thing. If you're listening to audio, I am wagging my finger ferociously <laughs> right now. <laughs> Why are you your finger? No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Okay, cool. let's get to the bonus question. Yeah. So in honor of fall, and this is the first, I guess, is it officially fall? Isn't fall in like mm-hmm. a couple of weeks into September? So it's still summer technically. When they hear it though, it'll be fall. Well, it's September. So we can do our first fall question. <laughs> yeah. We make and the rules here. Yeah. Our bonus question today is candy corn, yay or nay? And I feel like you know my answer. I yeah. think I know yours. Yeah. Well, I'm a oh. human garbage disposal, so yay. I'll eat literally anything pretty much. It's not my favorite candy. I don't choose it. Like I, if it's there, I'll eat it, but I wouldn't like go buy it probably. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm the same way. I get really excited around the hype of like fall foods and I get really excited for candy corn, but I'll eat like 10 pieces and then be over it. <laughs> I know. It's just it's like just, a block of sugar. Yeah. I was going to say it's so sugary. Yeah. And like, I love how it looks because it's so cute. I think that's the appeal for me too. It's just like the, the visual aspect of it. Yes. Follow-up question, candy corn versus the candy pumpkins. Pumpkins all the way. Pumpkins really? All the way. Oh yeah. I was going to say candy corn because the, the pumpkins are so sugary because they're so, they're, so they're like bigger and they're so much more dense. That I'm like, I can only have like two and then I'm like. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Okay, cool. Yeah. I was like a little if you bit. eat candy pumpkins, pair them with some protein. <laughs> Help that blood sugar. Stability. Yeah. We don't want that roller coaster going on. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh. Cool. Such a dietitian. Okay. Well, that was an easy one. We agreed for once. Yes. Cool. All righty. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Upbeat Dietitians podcast. As always, email us, DM us. If you have any episode ideas you want to hear, any guests you want to us to host on here. And yeah, thank you so much for supporting us. And we hope to, we hope we'll, we'll tune in next week. I don't know how you always get stuck doing the outro, but I live for it. <laughs> One day uh, I'm just going to make a progression video of every outro I do. And it's not, it's, I like to think it's improving, but I don't know. It's improving. It's improving. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look out for that TikTok, guys. It's coming of Emily <laughs> progressing in her outros. Yeah. Okay. Character Thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you guys next week. Alrighty. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for tuning in on this episode of the Upbeat Dietitians with your host, Emily Krause and Hannah Thompson. We appreciate you all so much for continuing to support us. In order to support us and sustain the success of this podcast, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to provide us feedback for future episodes and guest stars, follow us on Instagram at The Upbeat Dietitians. Lastly, you can show us support by providing a monthly donation using the link at the end of our bio. Once again, thank you so much for listening today and stay tuned next Wednesday for a new episode. Until then, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.